Steven Mead again, another Bullseye Guy podcast, still coming to you from LA, but we are broadcasting into Las Vegas. I would say sunny Las Vegas. When I, I contacted Jonathan, he had the, the, the screens up and all of a sudden he's like, let's fix the lighting. And he hits a button like I thought he would and the screens go down and now he's got this cool lighting set up. But um, fortunate Jonathan Wendell from Las Vegas. And uh, those of you in the gaming area may not know who Jonathan is, but you may know his name on the game side, and we're going to talk about that. So, uh, Jonathan, say hello, introduce yourself, and we'll, we'll get into the game side. Yeah, uh, my name is Jonathan Wendell, uh, actually originally from Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, I've been living in Las Vegas for about 12 years. Uh, my nickname is Fatality. Uh, I'm a 12-time esports world champion. I uh, received uh, the... Esports Hall of Fame and Lifetime Achievement Award in the last two or three years. And uh, yeah, just very passionate about esports and competition and uh, kind of living this lifestyle of being a professional gamer. Yeah, and you said something interesting. I, it's conjoined lifestyle and professional gamer. It's the professional gamer is what when I first met you years ago was so fascinating. So talk to us a little bit about just when you started gaming, how you got started in it, when you kind of thought, hey, I could be good at this. Yeah, I mean, I, I played a lot as a kid, uh, you know, but I also played a lot of sports. Um, I always liked competition, didn't really matter what it was. I mean, we could have a seatbelt race, who was a seatbelt the fastest, not be the guy that's in the game, you know. Uh, but, um, you know, I think when I became like, a, you know, a, a teenager, when I turned like about 15 I, I really realized like there's more tournaments going on like in, at these internet cafes and stuff like that in the, in the mid 90s and uh, I was just fascinated by the competition and the freedom to game from home you didn't really have to like live in the city where you know like if you want to be a snowboarder you gotta live in Colorado if yeah. you want to be a tennis player you gotta live on the west coast or the you know down in Florida you know you had to live in the climate of the sport and esports was like this you know, competitive gaming uh, in the mid nineties was like, you can literally play from anywhere and play against the best players in the world. And that really excited me as a young kid. Uh, and then basically from like the age of 15, 18 years old, I won like every term I entered uh, for a game called Quake. And uh, it was uh, a really fast first person shooter game. Uh, and basically after, uh, you know, after winning for three years, one of my friends told me about how good I was and I didn't really think anything of it because I mean all I was winning was like free internet for a year and I was winning like a <laughs> cell phone and a modem and all this old stuff and uh, it was more just bragging right to my friends um, but uh, they had a tournament for like 25 grand down in Texas and I decided to save up 500 bucks and I drove down to Texas stayed with one of my buddies down there for two weeks and trained for the tournament and then I went on to win uh, uh, third place at my very first big pro tournament I won 4550 bucks uh, over that week um, in the qualifier and in the main tournament. And I was just really excited about winning that kind of money at 18 years old because, you know, for me, I'd have to work all summer to make that money. <laughs> yeah. uh, so um, it was very exciting, very new, uh, very new for me. But uh, a lot of people were interviewing me back then because I was kind of a dark horse and everyone really liked my play style. I was a very aggressive player. Uh, I was really flashy. And uh, people just really enjoyed it. And, you know, I think right after that, like two weeks later, I got invited to go to Sweden to represent USA as one of the top 12 guys in the world. Um, and so I went to Sweden and I beat, uh, I beat all the guys there. I won 18 games straight, losing zero against the top 12 guys and, and basically uh, got a sponsorship deal out of it and basically started my, my, my life as a professional gamer. It was like, it was kind of like just, it happened so fast. And so what was the first game that you really started playing and got passionate about? Was it Quake or something before that? Well, Quake, Quake was really the, the very first game I was like super uh, hardcore on. I mean, you could say NBA Jam, like it was a, a basketball game that I played uh, back in the early 90s. But um, I only played in like one tournament. Blockbuster used to have these tournaments um, for NBA Jam and, yeah. and so forth. So. I took first in my city for NBA Jam, but I was playing against the AI. You're playing against the computer. I like playing against people and competing against people because people are unpredictable. And, and when you're dealing with the high tier level players, people are making like really crazy moves or really crazy plays in the game that you might not be ready for or whatever the deal is. So Quake was like 
uh, that was that came out in like 1996. That was like the first game I really got behind and just and I loved it. And and what you got really good at there's ty- there's different types of not only players and skills but different types of games and the ones that you really accelerated at are called first person shooter. Yeah. And, and so Quake was one of the biggest. What are some of the others that you? not only started to play, but apparently mastered because you've won more than, than anybody else. Yeah. I, I, uh, I, so I, I won, you know, a, a lot of quake, uh, you know, international world championships. Uh, I won one in team play, but most of my accomplishment, accomplishments were in one versus one. And uh, there's another game called unreal tournament. And so that was what I was featured on uh, MTV true life. I'm a gamer. And uh, that was a, a different type of game because the fights were more like, mid to far range fights and i always look at like different first person shooters as almost like a different fighting technique like it's like you might be a really good fighter but are you good at grappling are you good at boxing are you good at the ground game like what are you good at right because like when you watch mixed martial arts like every person has a different skill set they have a different special move they have a different way they play the game and so when i play quake and then play on a tournament it's a different fighting technique and uh that was what was really fun for me was switching throughout the games and the, the last game i played i was i i won uh you know 231 grand that year playing a game called painkiller uh not many people know the name the name of the, the, the game but uh it was they had a million dollar dollar world tour and i actually won the grand championship in new york city and got featured on 60 minutes and the whole the whole shebang uh, but that game was really fast paced. It was kind of almost like a throwback to Quake One, which was like the original game I played when I found my first love in uh, competitive esports gaming. And yeah, you know, I just love like really fast, like very like deadly games where it's like you have to have really good hand eye coordination, really good reflexes. And if you make a mistake, you, you're going to have to pay the price. Yeah. And uh, I, I just love that in uh, Painkiller. So I'm, I'm going to come back to some of that, but let's go a little bit backwards. Let's start with the name. How do you spell it? Because fatality isn't spelled the way you would think. How do you spell it? And how did you come up with it? Is it your own name or was it everybody you kept killing that said, hey, <laughs> you're fatality? Yeah, so uh, my, my nickname was fatality with an I actually when I was a young kid. So it was fatality, fatal, fatal. Fatality, F-A-T-A-L-I-T-Y. Right. And that was my name when I first started out. I picked the name when I was about 11 or 12 years old. I used to log on BBSs before the internet even came out. <laughs> and my alias was Fatality. And so I had a dial-up internet at my house. And, and you know, I, I created all these, like, login uh, names with Fatality um, because I was a big Mortal Kombat fan. I love Mortal Kombat. I used to go to 7-Eleven, all the arcades. And I love playing player versus player i love playing against people because it's just it's fun because like you're playing with someone else's mind you're like playing tricks on them just like yeah. if you're playing like chess and you're trying to like set up for the gut put them in checkmate that was what i was doing like in the game in mortal Kombat. uh so as the internet got better in the late 90s i changed my name to fatality with one in it so it's fatal f-a-t-a-l the number one t-y and so the reason why I changed this is because I wanted my stats to reflect if I was on dial-up or if I was on broadband internet. And, uh, and then basically the one represents kind of like being number one. Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, so basically I, I kind of lived up to the name <laughs> and uh, to the one in my name. And, and then I basically branded it. Uh, and that's kind of like the story, I guess, with the name Fatality. But, yeah, it's supposed to be like a metaphoric, like when I'm playing a game, I'm trying to really – take you out like i yeah, like it's, it's, if, you, if, you, if you remember mortal Kombat, says finish him and then you just rip right. the head off and hold <laughs> first it first person shooter jumping yeah. you know yeah well mortal Kombat was more hand to hand but so let's go down the list of of games that you've won or participated or been world championship in and and we have a only 21 minutes left so make it quick because yeah. the list yeah. is long <laughs> yeah yeah uh quake three arena unreal tournament 2003 any bridge putter two Doom 3, and Painkiller. Those are the okay. five games that won World Championship titles in. And then other ones you've actually placed, because when you look at the Wikipedia and things, it's 10, 12, 15. 
I, 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 I played what are Call some of, of the Duty. Other ones? I won tournaments in Call of Duty, but I would never say they're world championships. Like one tournaments in Counter Strike, you know, I won like all these like tournaments from different games, but like for me, they're never like the world yeah. world level. Um, so I just I never uh, counted them for like, and I just don't count them because I just well the best players weren't there or you know it wasn't that big of a deal. So okay. uh, I was I, the twelve championships I won uh, were like pretty uh, significant wins for me. Got it. Got it. And and you said something interesting, even back when I first met you, and you've kind of alluded to it in here. It's not just playing against the other people. When I asked you that, Jonathan, years ago, I said, well, what makes you better? And you actually went into the training aspect because, again, you're going against somebody else. It's reflexes. It's mental acuity. It's a, a, a lot of dexterity of the mind and the, the body and the, the hands. When did you start realizing that gaming is something that if you trained for, you could get better? Oh, I, I, I realized it very young, actually. Um, I, I realized it when I was a teenager. And I think uh, throughout high school, you know, I used to run cross country. I was team captain of my tennis team in high school. And I would, I would have, I do all this physical exertion, like, you know, playing hockey outside in the cul sac, you know, just, I was just, I was like a renaissance man in sports. I just played everything. I loved, every, I loved, loved playing. But I would come home and I'd, I'd go inside because late at night you have to you have to call it a day or if it's raining outside. Okay, what else am I gonna do? It's competitive. I would hop on the computer and start gaming. And then I just realized like, man, like I'm really on. Like, ooh, I, like I can feel the reflex. I can feel like right. the response. And I and I just felt it in my in me that I was like, wow, I'm like I'm like really on. And so that's what kind of drove me to my. Uh, training regiment throughout my professional career is like you know I ran two miles almost every day it didn't matter if I landed in Italy France and Germany and and Korea and China and all the way back to the U.S. basically whenever I landed in every, whatever country I was in I would put my running shoes on and go run for three songs one direction and then run back you know <laughs> and uh that was kind of like a thing I did every day and yeah I got in really good shape I think in 2005 I was probably the best shape of my life uh to some degree and um yeah, I just, you know, I was clicking and, and won, the, won in the tournament, so it felt great. Yeah, and it wasn't, you talked about it with me, it wasn't just the physical side. There was also, you know, nutritional discipline. There were, there were things that what I'm trying to get is, is, again, I have friends that are parents that have kids that are home and gaming. They're like, oh, I want to get yeah. them. Like the, the, the parents don't understand if the kid's good at it or is enthusiastic, it's, nutritional as well like there's other things that makes gaming more positive and not negative the nutritional side was something you talked about also yeah i mean I, you know I, I looked at things that would help my game so like you know i wasn't i didn't drink alcohol basically at all like i, I drank some like from when i had like big long breaks whatever deal is but like i was pretty clean overall i did i really didn't even drink soda at some points in my career and so i was like either juices or water um, I just worked on just like being sharp minded and, and I just really was a B testing my body all the time, trying to find out what would make me perform the best in the tournament situation. So I'm constantly trying to evolve and try, trying to, I'm trying to beat my opponent in many different ways, not only in the game, but in life or in being <laughs> physically fit or eating yeah. correctly. I mean, when you're dealing with an athlete in any, tr even traditional sports, people are trying to find every edge they can possibly get to take down their opponent. And they'll study film, they'll, they'll study themselves, how they can be stronger, they'll change their body to be stronger or more uh, like a specific part of them be better. And so I would do the same thing in esports and gaming. Yeah, and a lot of it too, again, I keep going back to this conversation, you probably had a million of them, I had one with you because I remember that one conversation. The, the, the mindset you actually said, as the tournaments go on and get later. Yeah. You know, your your acuity, you were able to stay sharp much later into the night and the early mornings than other people because the discipline you had. Yeah, I would say by by day three, like that's typically when the finals are is day three of the tournament. And so day three, you know, I'm still clicking, I'm still firing, I still feel energetic. And if some of the guys are starting to get sluggish, they're starting to get a little slow. They you know, maybe they were eating too much food, like too much bad food when they were in the tournament and so forth. So like I looked at things like this very seriously. Like, you know, I was always afraid of food coma actually when I played when I, when I was uh, yeah. in tournaments. So I would have like this massive breakfast in the morning. And then basically I would give my 
body like two or three hours to di digest it. And I'll be training in my hotel room with my other training partners and getting ready, sparring with them and getting ready for the tournament. Then I'd walk down to the tournament. I'd feel refreshed. I always have like a big bottle of water and I would just pound water all day until all my matches were done. I was not allowed to eat at all because if I ate one thing, my body's going to start putting all the energy to the, like to that food. And uh, that, that just scared the hell of me. And, and I've done the testing and like, Every time I ate, I just played bad. And I, I just did like, an, I would just think back, what I do for this tournament? I played really good this tournament. I did, I hit all these crazy shots. I did all these crazy things. And like, what did I do that game and this game? And I was, I was down to the point of like, okay, do I wear shoes with laces or no laces? <laughs> so, really? Uh, dude, I was nuts. <laughs> I mean, uh, and so if I had like a shirt I wore and, it, and I lost, I would throw the shirt away. You know, yeah. I was like, I was like, that thing's no good. Get it out of here. You know, so yeah. Uh, I was definitely like uh, uh, crazy about it. And that, that's what became fascinating again, because the gaming, when I spoke to you was, it, it was mental endurance. It was physical. It was mind, you know, nutrition, like it's, it's encompassing everything. It's not some kid in his basement playing with his thumbs. I mean, it, it's much broader than that to really be good at it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's such a uh, unique thing to be uh you know, to be one of the best gamers in the world. Like, you know, you look at any of these professional gamers, they have something that someone that other people just don't have. And it's just like, you look at traditional sports. There's a reason why there's only so many players in the NBA. There's only a reason why there's so many players in the NFL. These are the best of the best. And they're all there because they made it. And they, they've done something that no one else was doing, or they didn't sacrifice enough to get there. And uh, I gave up a lot, um, you know, throughout my career to be where I was. And I knew what I was going for. And I was the one that sacrificed everything to be the best I possibly could every day. And uh, I knew I didn't want to be a flash in the pants. So that was like, it was just a long grind. And, and you know, the record speaks for itself. I mean, I think I, I was the number one uh, highest paid esports player for over a decade. And so, but like, that was just a test of my never giving up, being relentless and just keep going forward. And, you know, I had a lot of people that doubted me, but it was love. I had a great time proving them wrong. It was, it was yeah. a great ride. Well, and just like sports, it, sports at a high level, we, we, you we eventually age out, right? I mean, there's there's senior tour for golf and sports and things like that. But to be at the peak, you eventually age out and have to go do something else. And I know you started some other businesses. Uh, and so I want to transition into the business because the other yeah. thing I remembered you talking just, about. Just to be clear, I was ready to play much longer uh, from when I stopped. It's just the first person shooter genre, like the Pacific game style I played and so forth. They just, that kind of like the money just wasn't there anymore. And like, so basically I had to find a way to evolve and change my life, like to fit, you know, esports coming in the future. And so for me, I was definitely not done with uh, what I was doing, but it was just time because the, the money that was in esports back then, like in like, you know, 2007, 2008 was changing. And, and the games they were, the masses were catering to were more to MOBA games or to team-based games and so yeah. forth. So, uh, but yeah, I, I played the best hand I could play, I think for the situation I was in and, and kind of maximize my potential. And we'll get into more of that right now, I guess. Yeah, because again, even when we talked, one of the things you, you were talking about then and you hadn't even started it yet was the equipment itself, the reflexivity of, of the, the mouse, the, the, the sensitivity of the equipment was something you were complaining. And you may not remember it. You were complaining oh, yeah, about it then. And I think that's kind of what you transitioned into. So talk to us about some of the things you've moved into and have now, because I think your brand is, has become really cool. Yeah, so the uh, Fatality brand, I, I actually started during my playing days. Um, so um, one of the things I created was I actually have uh, one of the old ones here, but like I'm actually going to make some more. It's like these really large like gaming mouse pads. And so I was like the inventor of large gaming mouse pads. It didn't yeah. exist back when I played. Uh, so this actually what used to be a printer pad. You put a printer on it. And so I took it. I was like, this is a really good mouse pad. I took it to the tournaments. Everyone saw me playing with this mouse pad. This like really big printer pad. They're like, what is that? And I was like, that's my mouse pad. That thing's like way too big, dude. And I'm like, well, like I'm winning. So, uh, so, so, uh, so anyways, I, I kind of like marked uh, this printer pad that was sold at CompUSA back in the day. It's an old uh, electronic store. Um, 
And then, uh, yeah, basically I started branding uh, the mouse pad and selling it worldwide. Uh, I did all the sales and uh, kind of the production here in the USA. Uh, and then I also did uh, distribution to Europe, which I shipped over like pallets of these mouse pads to, to Germany. And I sent uh, some to uh, Japan and, and so forth. Uh, but yeah, I had the amazing time, like, you know, basically creating a product and finding ways I can play better. So when I'm making product or building product, I'm always thinking about how can I play better? How can I be a step ahead? And yeah. all these people that were trying to get into esports and gaming, they were like creating these gaming products. And like, I was like, dude, like you have no idea what you're doing. <laughs> And so I was living and breathing uh, the competition and playing, and I knew what I needed to win. And so that's, I started my company selling mouse pads, made, made five or 10 grand a month selling mouse pads. And I was like, wow, this is freaking great. And like uh, kind of uh, expanded there into a, a licensing brand where I licensed the Fatality brand to uh, leading manufacturers. And, you know, I made sound cards with Creative Labs, Fatality headphones, um, we did motherboards, power supply units, graphic cards, RAM. We did a bunch of different stuff, but my, my biggest sellers were the sound cards, the mouse pads, and the headphones. Yeah, and, and that's mother, what I said, motherboard too. Motherboard, really the big. motherboard. Yeah, because the 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 technology platforms for gaming is different than traditional computing and things like that. And there there's a specialty that you, that you're able to bring to working with a designer because you've played it for for a decade or two. Yeah, I just, I, I know what I need and I, and like, uh, you know, they, 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 the engineers listened to what I had to say and I explained to them how important it is and why it's important. And they're like, oh, that makes sense. You know, <laughs> like, so it's like, it's more like common sense, but like some engineers just didn't get it back in the day and they just didn't understand why I would need that specific thing. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I was very lucky that people bought into my dream uh, to create products for gamers and and then kind of uh, it evolved over, you know, over a decade or so. And so with what you're doing now, what's the primary, you know, mission for Jonathan on the brand side and the personal side? Well, so for Fatality Brand, I, you know, I'm working on relaunching the site and doing some things like relaunching the brand. Like I just ended my contract with the uh, Fatality Motherboards uh, with my last partner. Uh, so working on just like relaunching the fatality brand to some degree, like, uh, to, uh, to the market. Um, but, uh, I'm working on a new company. I started called ready up and ready up is, a it's a, uh, it's an esports gaming platform, uh, to help people with their own operated channels to activate against their audience, to get them in, to engage in esports and gaming events. Okay. So we're working with ESL, working with, uh, uh, Electronic Gaming Federation, we're with Cyber Athlete out of Southeast Asia, we're working with NACE. So we work with like different colleges across the globe uh, now with our platform. And we're just really trying to help esports and gaming be more attainable by the mainstream and masses. So uh, we're trying to make it easier for people to get in the game and, and to participate, also to watch. Uh, you can add uh, these events to your calendar and there's call to actions that, uh, you know, go with those events. And we're just trying to drive more engagement. So People, it's easier to get into esports. It's easier to watch. It's easier to be uh, involved in the whole, uh, you know, the whole mission of esports and gaming. So, it's been a big passion, passion project of mine, and it's been uh, going pretty well. We're activating against a lot of our partners actually this year. Okay, and and when you started, Jonathan, did you? Um, again, I just interviewed Iman Pulis, my my friend who runs Sigma, the the global gaming conference out of Malta, and we were talking about it when you started. Did you have any idea? Well, the, the first person shooter was the gaming and now there's multi player gaming. Now there's these stadium events where people are watching online, some kid playing a game online. When you started, did you have any idea it was going to be as big as it is and how much bigger do you think it can become? Well, I think, I mean, I kind of always saw it coming, you know, because I used to post demos all the time on websites because people would download thousands and thousands of my demos, uh, you know, back in, uh, you know, the early 2000s, I mean, millions of people watched my d uh, videos on YouTube. And so I, I was like, dude, there's a lot of people that are very interested in like high level gaming and, and, yeah. and performance. Obviously, Twitch came out, uh, you know, uh, late 2000, early two, uh, 2010 or 11. And um uh, and basically took the world by storm with people like being able to watch live. And that became like a phenomenon. I mean, you look at some of these guys making tens of millions of dollars uh, live streaming, it's really remarkable. And, um, 
yeah, I mean, I think the future of esports and gaming is just, you know, it's just making it more accessible by to, to everyone. You know, I mean, you know, I think it's hard for the mainstream to get into esports to know when the qualifier is, to know when the tournament is, when can I watch and tune in? And that's what we're trying to do at Ready Up as a as a B two B company, working with people that already have audience and helping their audience engage into all the things that are going on in esports, not only first person shooters but MOBA games and to every different kind of genre of gaming. Uh, and then keep people posted, like when's season two starting, when's season four starting? Oh, there's a new new downloadable content. Okay, I want to know about that more, you know, more readily. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm just excited about trying to help esports grow now, I guess, in my career. Okay, and this is a, it, it's, it's, it's a convergence question that you may find interesting. I don't know the answer to, but it, because of the conversation earlier with you, you're in Vegas, yeah. you end up gambling. Internet gambling has been around for years and is growing. The esports gaming is there going to be a convergence as well of gambling and betting on esports gaming, or is that already there and I just don't know about it? There is betting on esports, of course. Um, you know, actually, I have a I have a meeting next week. I already lined up with the senator of Nevada um, on Monday, uh, okay. talking about these discussions and top topics. You know, obviously, uh, they want an authentic way to be involved with esports and you know bring both parties together and so forth and and make it a safe you know. Uh, a process for people to partake in that because people want to gamble on esports just like they bet on the Super Bowl, yeah, just like they bet on the the World Series and, and and so on the World Cup. Like people want to do it because it makes it more exciting, and you know people like to watch when they have some skin in the game. And um, it's going to be very interesting to see how it all plays out. I mean, obviously living in, in Nevada, I've I've went to the sports book and made some bets <laughs> on the Super Bowl and and all that kind of stuff and. Uh, I'm still waiting to make my first wager, I guess, in esports. Uh, you know, I just haven't done it, but uh, I know that uh, it, it's been a while ago, but like probably like five, eight years ago, we had like one of our first, uh, I think it was a downtown grand. They took the first like esports wager uh, here in Vegas like a while ago. So it's coming, it's getting more sophisticated, and like I'm looking forward to my call uh, on Monday with the senator. Yeah, it's as I said, it's the the industry is so much bigger than people know. The it's bigger than entertainment. It's bigger than movies. It's as big or bigger than traditional old world a, a year ago in person sporting events. <laughs> you know, so when 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 we start having these what I think will be hybrid events like the the esports or these stadium events, but a lot of it's watched online. There there's no reason the competitive nature of the audience shouldn't be able to to bet on that yeah I, I think i think it's just coming down with you know everything from the tournament organizer and, and the game all being kind of like up to par and, and making sure that you know both parties are communicating with each other and um you know everyone just wants a fair a fair a fair battle so that's not rigged or something like along those lines and and you know when you're dealing with the world championship for like league of legends or uh you know for any of these like big major game publisher titles you can feel pretty confident that it's it's on the up and up for the finals. You know, I mean, yeah. these guys can win so much from winning these type of events, and it creates a legacy for them that it's, it's unbelievable. Um, so uh, there's a lot on, a lot on the line for these guys to win these big tournaments, and I feel it's very safe. But you got you got to put rules in place, and you got to do things to protect everyone. You know, that's the only way it's going to work. I think in the long term. All right, so we're going to end with two questions. One from a, a Jonathan Wendell fatality brand. What would you tell a, a company or a brand or a sponsor of why they should work with you? Cause I have people I've always tried to send you. I've got some more I'm going to, but professionally, why should they work with you? Well, for me, I, you know, I'm a very authentic piece and esports history as a pioneer of esports, uh, you know, winning a ton of titles, obviously, uh, esports hall of famer, lifetime achievement award. Uh, so the biggest thing for the fatality brand and, and me as a person is that you get a very authentic person uh, in the industry. That's kind of, uh, you've been here for a couple of decades now. I turned 40, uh, last Friday. So, uh, you know, uh, working on the 40 game right now, but, um, very, uh, very passionate about esports. My, my life goal is to continue to push esports and gaming as far as possible for the day I die. So, um, very, uh, very authentic here. So let's, let's transfer that authenticity and pushing esports to the parental level for the parent, because we're, we're, we're still pre COVID post COVID. And I told you there's parents who are concerned their kids 
down there gaming too many hours. What would you tell a parent who's worried about his his child, you know, or their child gaming? And what encouragement would you give that parent of what the child should be doing? Yeah, you just gotta create a, a really well rounded uh, balance for the for the kid or for the person that wants to, um, you know, dedicate their time and energy towards esports. Esports is a beautiful thing. I mean, the thing is to learn how to uh, organize a team and, and, and lead a team or be a team player. I mean, everyone's playing a position just like you do in traditional sports. That's why in the back when, back in the day when I was a kid, my dad's like, "Hey, go play baseball, play on a team because you have to work. You have to work as a team, like three, two, one. You know, let's go, kind of thing, right?" And so, esports and gaming is really no different. It's just we're behind a computer doing something that's kind of like a sport. Uh, on the video game, I mean, people are trying to think about how can I beat this guy? How can I, how can I out, can I trick him and so forth? But right. uh, I think for parents, you really got like, if I, you know, if I had, a, if I had a kid, I mean, I would work very hard on them doing sports and like just being a very well-rounded person in general. Like I would teach them business. I would teach them, you know, how to game and so forth, obviously. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think that was one of my strong suits is always being very well-rounded. And, and I think for kids that are not inclined to be, outdoors the athletic that's where you kind of get into like the problem where like the kid just wants the game you still have to do something else you can't yeah. just sit there eight 12 hours a day uh you you have to get up you have to walk around you have to get some exercise you know like it's it's very important to be very well rounded and I, I think you're limiting yourself if you only game yeah perfect all right buddy i i appreciate the time you know always great to, to talk to you finally seeing you i haven't seen you in a while and uh, hopefully we'll change that either in, in Vegas or Kansas City or maybe Malta. I'm going to work on getting you to the, the Sigma Global Gaming. Yeah, that would be a pleasure to be invited out there. That would be, be great. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Nice seeing you, man. All right. Steve and me, the Bullseye Guy podcast. Tune in again next week.